What's up guys, today we are going to be taking a look at the fastest CPU in the world. The world record holder for highest clock speed ever recorded. And it's probably not a CPU that you would think. When most people think about the fastest consumer CPU available, I would imagine the default is gonna be maybe one of AMD's new chips. So the 3950X or even maybe the 3990X, the monster 64 core Threadripper chip that just released and is setting records as far as overall Cinebench score. Maybe they even default back to the Intel 9900KS, which is basically 9900K, but comes pre-overclocked, five gigahertz out of the box, all core and can go higher than that. But those would all be wrong. Actually, the fastest clock speed ever recorded on a consumer grade CPU. For that, we gotta go all the way back to 2014 and AMD's 8370. That's right, they're very controversial eight core chip, which is basically just four cores with hyper threading. But in 2014, it recorded an all core overclock of 8722 megahertz. Yeah, that was on liquid helium, and yeah, we're not getting there today. But the fact remains that these chips from AMD, the entire FX line, when it was released, they were highly, highly overclockable. Maybe they weren't the best on an IPC basis, and as a result, they weren't the most powerful overall. So we're not gonna see huge Cinebench scores from this. But when you take a look at just how fast these cores can run, especially for the time that they came out, it was monumentally impressive. AMD did offer other versions of this chip that basically came pre-overclocked. The 8370 came with a base clock of four gigahertz and a boost clock of 4.3, but they also offered a 9370 and a 9590. 9590 actually came out of the box running at five gigahertz all cores, but it consumed a massive amount of power and didn't have a whole lot of headroom after that because of how hot it ran. AMD actually sold that chip in a bundle with a liquid cooler just for the sole reason that it ran so hot it didn't want to package it with one of its smaller air coolers that came with most of its other chips. The 8370, however, was not in that same boat. The TDP on this chip is only 125 watts. That might not seem like a lot for a chip that could run this fast, but when you started cranking up those voltages, started cranking up those clock speeds, you will see that it still pulls a hell of a lot of wattage. And as a result, what we're gonna try to do today is see how fast we can get it running on a 360 millimeter AIO. This right here is the new Alpha Cool Ice Bear Aurora. We saw this at CES 2020 and I've been dying to get it on a test bench and check it out. It's a pretty beefy unit, it looks pretty good too. And we're gonna have some more coverage of this a little bit later on, but I wanted to get it on here and see how it performed with this FX chip. The rest of our test bench consists of a Sabertooth 990 FX motherboard from Asus. When you're overclocking these FX chips from AMD, you want a 990 FX chip set. And there are a couple boards that, are, that really stand out as far as being better than the others as far as overclocking goes. And the Sabertooth is definitely one of those. It's got good power delivery and it handle these, handles these chips great. Other than that, we've got some Dominator Platinum memory. This is DDR3. We're not gonna really worry about memory overclocking. We're not shooting for a high Cinebench score. We're just worried about actual CPU clock speed. So this memory is gonna do fine. For, for video out, we're just using a very basic video adapter. This is just an RX 560. It doesn't need any supplemental power, just runs off PCIe power. And again, we're not worried about overclocking that. We're just focused on our CPU today. So we've got everything booted up at stock settings. Everything in the BIOS is stock right now. This is running at its normal base and boost frequency. So no manual overclock applied, no voltage changes, no nothing. We're just gonna lay down a Cinebench run. We're gonna see what kind of temperatures we get, what kind of power usage we get, and what kind of uh, Cinebench score we get. And then we're gonna try overclocking and see how fast we can get this chip to go. While this is running, I actually have the entire system hooked up to a kilowatt. So we're gonna take a look at the wattage that we're pulling from the wall. This will be for the entire system, but again, we're not running with super power hungry components besides the CPU right now. So this is gonna give us a good indicator of the differences uh, in wattage that we're pulling based on either stock settings or overclock settings. 
Right now, the kilowatt is reading 188 watts under full load while we're running Cinebench. Uh, I think that's a pretty reasonable amount considering that the CPU is supposed to be pulling 125. So 50, 60 watts for the rest of the system seems reasonable. And we'll kind of use that as a jumping off point and see how much power this actually gets to be uh, taking up while we're doing our overclocks. First Cinebench run, we got a 622. You can see that we got up to 4.3 gigahertz on all cores, which is what we would expect with the 4.3 rated boost. Uh, temperatures were pretty much under control here. Maximum of 39 degrees, is that even possible? It might be reading slightly wrong. The reporting on these older AMD chips is not always great, but it actually wouldn't surprise me if it was staying that cool. This is a really good AIO. Uh, but still, that seems a little bit low, but at least it's a, a good point of reference. And we'll, we'll kind of start from there again. Same thing with the voltage. So let's dive into the BIOS and start dialing things up. So we're in the BIOS. And I don't know why things have gone green all of a sudden. This is typically an issue we see with new AMD graphics card drivers. But I've already rebooted the system several times and it wasn't green before. In any event, I hope that you could still see what I'm doing. I'm, I'm pretty confident that you can. Uh, so we're just going to run through some basic settings here as far as what you want to change uh, when it comes to uh, these older AMD FX CPUs and overclocking. Uh, for one, I want to set this to DOCP. This is just your memory clocks. And basically, this allows you to set it at what the equivalent of like an XMP profile. Again, we're not too worried about our memory here. So we're just going to leave it on 1600 megahertz. The CPU ratio is what's going to determine your clock speed. So right now it's at 20. And you can see that our target CPU speed is four gigahertz if we start increasing this to say 22 it starts to go up now it's at 44 so basically you want to step this up in 0.5 increments and every 0.5 is equivalent to 100 megahertz uh, so right now i think we're going to target a lot of people uh, who do overclocking this chip say that they max out around 4.5 to 4.7 gigahertz so let's see if we can hit that 4.6 gigahertz mark and then um hopefully go higher than that. For our voltage, we don't wanna go offset mode. We wanna dial in a manual uh, voltage for our CPUs. For a 4.6 gigahertz overclock, I don't think we should need more than say 1.4, especially with our uh, with our load line calibration set the way it is. Uh, we're gonna get be getting probably a little bit more than 1.4 volts through our CPU. And for that clock speed, that should be plenty. Uh, for our memory, I think we wanna set this at 1.4 six that should be fine we shouldn't have to touch that anymore after that and as far as like northbridge and southbridge voltage uh, i just leave those on auto and that usually works out fine back into windows we are running at 4.6 gigahertz all core our memory is running at 1600 as we wanted temperatures are a little bit higher obviously than they were um, before when we were just idling and uh, let's see what kind of cinnamon result this gives us 708 not a huge improvement to be honest we're pulling 288 watts from the wall while doing this so an increase of 100 watts for not that much of an increase in score but in frequency we caught we clocked up an extra 300 megahertz so that's what this chip is good at running fast but the ipc the instructions per clock not good which was one of the issues with this series of chips yeah you can get them running super fast but that didn't do you very much as far as productivity goes Let's see if we can go higher. I just decided to see if we could hit five gigahertz without even going up incrementally. So we've clocked up to five gigahertz. Voltage is at 1.45 volts right now. Temperatures are creeping up there a little bit higher. And uh, let's see if the Cinebench run will complete. 756, so we went up another 50 points. We did complete without any real problems. Temperatures didn't even get out of control. We're looking at mid 50s here, peaking at like 60 degrees Celsius. Power draw from the wall though, uh, I just checked it out, 349 watts, 349 watts from the wall for an overclock that doesn't really get us very much in return. That's pretty crazy power draw and uh, you can see why people refer to these as space heaters. Let's see how fast we can go. I think we've basically reached the limits of what our cooler can do. We're, we're cranking up those temperatures really high and a couple times what I've been playing around with this right now 5.3, 5.4 gigahertz range. We just got like instant thermal shutdown as soon as I open any program. 
Right now we are booted at 5.3 gigahertz, but you can see our idle temperature is not exactly ideal. If we had a full custom loop on here or maybe some chilled water or liquid nitrogen or something, we could certainly press on, but this is probably the highest we could get. I've gotten 5.3 to complete a couple times, but it's also crashed a couple times on me. So I'm gonna try this run if it completes or not. We'll just kind of finish up this video either way, but hopefully it completes. Uh, it's been drawing 400 plus watts from the wall when I've been doing this, which is pretty crazy. But as you can clearly see, these chips do clock up pretty high and it's not terribly hard to do so. So let's cross our fingers and run Cinebench. Okay, so we crashed again. Uh, it's been a little frustrating. I got it to complete a couple times and ever since then it just hasn't. But uh, scores again were not very impressive at all. They were kind of around where the 4770 is. So like low 800s, 810 to 820, somewhere around there. So you're putting all this extra heat into your system, all this extra power. The power draw was like 460 watts when this was running and you're not really getting a whole lot out of it. But these chips can go fast and that is the point. So I hope you guys enjoyed this little look back at the AMD FX 8370, the world record holder for fastest CPU but it doesn't really matter because all the modern stuff is just so much more powerful, so much better IPC, so much more efficient, um, but it's always fun to tinker with old stuff. And if I had a better cooling solution, I, I would really like to give it a go and see if we could hit six gigahertz plus or something like that, but maybe we'll save that for another day. Thanks so much for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed this and we'll see you next time.